Today we're going to be patching up the holes left by our bullets when we shot the Tesla Cybertruck. If you remember while we were shooting it, the 9mm bullets did not go through, neither did the 22, but the 17, 223, and the 50 cal all made some pretty massive damage in the stainless steel sheet, and today we have to fix that. Since there is no paint or primer or anything else, we should just be able to weld stainless sheets right onto the stainless steel body using a welder powered by the Cybertruck's battery. For how weird this machine looks, it is actually pretty darn useful. One thing I did notice, however, after shooting the Cybertruck is that while all the exterior buttons worked and all the buttons inside the cab, the only buttons that did not work were the buttons inside of the door. The 50 cal bullet ripped through one of the indoor wiring harnesses. This was pointed out by Wes, one of the Tesla engineers over on Twitter, which is fantastic customer service. And I'm gonna try to splice that wiring harness back together to get the interior buttons working. This button right here still works, but none of the buttons inside. I'm sure Tesla would be able to fix the door in one of their service centers, but since we have the tools, I kind of want to see if we can do it ourselves. There's been rumors that the stainless steel on the Cybertruck is rusting, which I don't think is the case. Nothing that just can't buff out. However, one place that is rusting is inside of my wheel, which is kind of a substantial amount of rust for only two weeks of ownership. To be fair to Tesla though, I'm sure this rust would occur on every $100,000 vehicle that ships without hubcaps. We could replace this entire panel. Oshkut has brake presses that could even make those bins, but I kind of like the way that these nine millimeter holes look. So the only thing we really need to patch are the 50 cal, the 17, and the 223. But before we can do that, we need access to the inside, and I'll have to disassemble the interior so it doesn't start on fire when the sparks start flying. To get access to the interior panel, first we're gonna remove the upper section of the door, which looks like it's just held in place with some blue plastic clips. Once those are popped out, we can drop down the white soft soundproofing blanket and disconnect two wires, which look like they're connected to the ambient lighting. The lower portion of the Cybertruck door panel is held on in a very similar way, except this time around, we have three eight millimeter bolts holding down the lower portion. And once those are removed, the little blue snaps can be popped right off. With the door panel removed, there's a few wires left, one of which goes to a computer module, which I'm super glad we did not hit with a bullet, and the other one goes to just the rear passenger door speaker. Not quite as important. You can see where the bullets came through. This one was the 50 cal hole, and the 17 and the 223 hit in about the same spot over here, barely missing the computer module. And then this is the motor for the window. And then I'm not sure what pulley this is, but we just barely missed that. And this little guy here at the bottom of the door is the emergency release handle. So if the electronics or the battery ever dies inside of the truck, you can still exit by pulling this lever. Being the first people to take apart a Tesla Cybertruck door means we don't really know what we're looking for. There were 11 8 millimeter bolts around the inside of the door paneling, but once those were removed, we still could not get out that central plastic piece. Turns out that there's two more additional bolts holding a clamp attached to the window glass. And once those bolts were removed, we could slide the glass directly up and out the top of the door. All right which means that if someone breaks their rear passenger glass window, Tesla could swap out the entire panel in about five minutes, which gets a huge thumbs up for repairability from me. Now, with that glass out, we should be able to remove two more additional six millimeter Allen bolts and then pop out the interior plastic paneling, which will then give us access to the bullet wounds that we were hoping to find about an hour ago. This is where the window motor is that moves these cables and the pulley where the cable wraps around and heads up to the glass. We were so close to blowing that to smithereens. It's interesting seeing the bullet holes from the back side of the door. Some pretty massive bumps from the nine mil. And then when the bullets came through, it broke off this aluminum covered rubber sheet. Talk about that in a second. But up here, even though they were just bumps, it like blasted up the aluminum foil. Now you might be thinking to yourself, hey Jerry, why would Tesla stick rubberized tin foil on the backside of the Cybertruck doors? Let me show you. So it turns out sheet metal is actually really noisy. It acts as a gong. So when Tesla puts that rubberized tin foil on the backside, it kind of dampens the sound of the metal. So instead of ringing, 
It has a dull thunk to it, which makes it a lot quieter driving down the road. And it's actually a pretty cool invention. The rubber dampens the noise. The reason we pulled the Cybertruck into this particular warehouse is because we're going to patch the bullet holes with lasers. This video isn't sponsored, I've just been friends with the guys over at Oshkut for a few years now, and they let me use their massive metal laser cutting machines for a few projects. Well, I mean, technically anyone can use the machines, and that's the whole point. We decided to use a Cybertruck shaped piece of stainless steel to patch the stainless steel door of my Cybertruck. We upload the drawing into Oshkut's online portal, and within about 3 seconds worth of laser time, and about 25 bucks, my stainless cyber patch is ready for my cyber truck. The patch just needs to be large enough to cover the 50 cal hole, the 17 hole, and the 223 hole. Since my superior grouping ability put all three pretty close together, we can get the entire job done with just one patch. I'll trace the patch's shape onto the surface of the door, and then surgically extract the damaged material to make room for our new plug. I decided to leave the 9mm divots just because they look super cool and make for a good story when people see us out on the road. With the Cybertruck shape cut out of the Cybertruck door, we can insert our Cybertruck patch. I've been prepping for this moment since I was a baby. And now it comes time to weld them both together. Welding stainless steel, however, is more of an art form. It takes a very highly skilled person to do so. Luckily, I have my buddy Jacob, who's gonna be doing the welding for us. He was also one of the guys who shot the nine mil at the door. How you feeling about it, Jacob? Fingers crossed. <laughs> Should be interesting. I don't know if you've ever welded on a stainless steel truck before? No, I've never done automotive. I'm a pipeline welder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Since welding is not a service that Oshkot offers, I brought my own welder and we're using the 240 volts worth of onboard power supplied by the Cybertruck's battery. Extremely handy. Welder is plugged in, got the grounding clamp. <laughs> Welding thin metal is actually pretty tricky. Thank you. Since the extreme heat coming out of the welder can warp the flat plate, we have to weld in very small sections and let the metal cool down enough to touch in between the short welding bursts. And since this metal is thin enough to get red molten hot on both sides, we have to shield the pool of liquid metal with a noble gas called argon. Argon not to be confused, of course, with the noble Aragorn, heir to the throne of Gondor. If the liquid metal reacts with the oxygen in the air, it gets compromised. You know, instant oxidation. So this argon gas-filled back purge floods the immediate area with argon, displacing the oxygen. Just long enough for the stainless to solidify back into solid form where it doesn't need any more protection from anything. And coming around to the other side, you can see the discoloration of the stainless. As it gets to different temperatures, it kind of like oxidizes in different ways. Kind of like how we've seen titanium change colors in the past. And I think Elon floated the idea of making the entire truck out of titanium at one point way back in the early days. But I'm glad they went with stainless instead. Now we're going to grind down the weld beads and kind of flush out this surface so we can wrap it later. Nice work, Jacob. Thank you. It's better than it used to be. It's a low bar. <laughs> <laughs> I think it turned out pretty well, if I do say so myself. And now the welds are ground down completely flat, and it almost makes me want to do the whole truck like this. That is a super cool finish. Minor, uh, <laughs> at least this part is flat. Getting the door put back together was super easy. With the closeout panel in place and the window regulator back in, we can drop the passenger window into the door opening. 
incredibly simple and easy to repair design that Tesla absolutely nailed. Something I absolutely nailed, however, was the door trim wiring harness that got yeeted in half by a 50 cal bullet. And now we have to splice those wires back together if I ever want to use the buttons again. Tesla did make this slightly more difficult by using the same color wire for multiple switches, but I'll let that lazy cost-saving maneuver slide since I did the exact same thing on my EV Humvee, and Tesla has gone out of their way to provide the complete inner wiring diagram of the Cybertruck available for free on their website. Pretty much unheard of. Tesla's free repair guides are the most detailed I've ever seen in my entire life. I can check for continuity between the pins and the tips of the blown up wires, and I can use Tesla's pinout diagrams to get all the interior door buttons put back together again and functioning. With the wires spliced back where they belong, the door can be rebuilt good as new. What we've learned so far is that the Cybertruck is indeed able to be patched fairly easily. However, the surface finish of the stainless steel is near impossible to imitate. So if you are trying to repair any scratches or bullet wounds, there is gonna be a visible patch in the surface. However, this doesn't matter too much to us because we're getting the whole thing wrapped. The bare metal industrial dishwasher aesthetic of the Cybertruck is enticing to be sure, but with how many people are taking pictures and videos of this machine while driving, I might as well turn the flat face angular surfaces into a mobile billboard. I'm working with a company called Lux Automotive here in Salt Lake City, Utah. They're the same people who wrapped my wife's Model X and did the tint on my Rivian. Certified by both Tesla and Rivian, they are the obvious choice to install my bright blue 3M not a wheelchair vinyl. For the most part, wrapping a Cybertruck is easier and faster than most other cars, thanks to the extremely flat surfaces. The adhesive smells pretty good. Yeah, oh yeah. But for each flat stainless steel sheet, the edges are all visible, and wrapping those edges are the most time-consuming part. We also put on a layer of self-healing clear transparent paint protection film from Lamar. This Lamar PPF goes over top of the blue vinyl to physically protect it, as well as help keep the blue from fading. The self-healing part comes from the heat of the sun, or a heat gun in our case. Any scratches or divots from rock chips will just disappear, and it has a crazy 10-year manufacturer's warranty. Personally, I think they should be building phones out of this stuff, because extra protection is always a good thing. I'll show how we worked around the bullet holes in just a second. One downside to owning an EV is that even when they appear to be turned off, they are actually always on, monitoring and controlling the battery temperature to keep it healthy. If the cabin gets too hot, the AC will kick on automatically to make sure the battery stays within its optimal temperature range. If we were to take out a heat lamp and a BTU meter, we could see that the lamp puts out about 350 BTUs worth of heat, and about 57 of those BTUs pass through the front factory windows into the cabin. Moving to the back windows, about 51 BTUs worth of heat get in through the dyed rear factory glass. Combine that with the glass roof and the glass windshield of the Cybertruck, it's just a gigantic solar oven on wheels. However, once we add the strato ceramic window tint to every piece of glass, those BTUs that are able to enter into the cabin get cut down to just two. This means that the automatic AC and battery coolers won't turn on as much, giving us more overall range and just keeping the battery healthier over time. Aside from just looking cool, a ceramic tint is especially functional on EVs. And finally, to make this traveling billboard a reality, we used a third layer of reflective white vinyl for the Not A Wheelchair logo. To get the vinyl to wrap around the stainless steel edges of the Cybertruck a bit better, Lux uses a lighter. Flame goes a long way to warming the adhesive and getting the edges to wrap around and grip the corners. And of course, in our case, sink into the curvaceousness of our bullet holes. My Not A Wheelchair company manufactures the least expensive off-road wheelchairs on the planet. And in a few months, thanks to your views and support of the channel, we are also releasing the most affordable custom rigid wheelchairs on the planet called the Paradox Project, all made right here in the USA. More information will come out in a later video, of course, but would you look at that? The billboard is already working. Thanks, Elon. And at night, the reflective decal pops especially well. Huge thanks to Lux Automotive and Lumar for the wrap. If you're ever in Salt Lake City, Utah, and have a ride you want to protect, definitely check them out. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.